Hello and welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's live music channel. My name is Chris Au and I'll be your host for today's show, which is really exciting because I will be interviewing the people of the Bella Music Foundation for the Blind. Namely, we will have uh, the CEO, Mira Kim, conductor, Helen H. Chapio, and concertmaster, Kulip Jong, joining us for a really exciting interview. We'll be discussing how the Bella Music Foundation for the Blind was started, the concerts, concerto competitions, uh, their winners as well, which will be announced, as well as their experience with very talented blind musicians. This is a really exciting interview that I get to undertake and I'm really excited for you to be a part of it today as well. So I'm sure we'll be really inspired by the incredible that work that they do. They are not only based um, in the US, but they tour all around the world. And this is a wonderful way to see how musicians and professionals within the industry are thriving. And all of this is to serve musicians and music lovers out there by providing uh, inspiration from one of the greatest people we know in the industry doing amazing work and it is because it is our passion to be com uh, connecting musicians and audiences in real-time musical performances and live programs from around the globe. Hello and welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's live music channel. You're joining us now. This is a really exciting show because I have the privilege of interviewing uh, the Bella Music Foundation and its incredible members who form it from the conductor, Ellen H. Uh, Chapio, uh, the concertmaster, uh, Kulip Jong, as well as the CEO, Mira Kim, who all three of them are just incredible musicians as well as administrators, people who really participate in the music industry and make it work. Uh, this season at Virtual Concert Hall, and soundless receiver and progressive musicians we have such an incredible array of shows and this is just the beginning we have lined up in the future not only amazing orchestral performances and soloists but also opportunities to perform in Carnegie Hall and much much more around the world we are expanding we are a company that's built out from the pandemic and yet we've soared to try to combine an online and in-person experience for everybody as well as providing value so, but first, let's take a quick look at what we have in store for this coming season. So what's really amazing about our upcoming season is that not only will you get to hear incredible music, uh, but we also have the opportunity to interview, thanks to this online platform, a lot of the people who are behind the scenes. As you will see from our, our interviews and our shows, which are on every day, we have shows every day that feature certain organizations, feature certain musicians, as well as feature the people behind the scenes making all this happen. We have had conversations with um, artist managers, from promoters, from people who um, record online masterclasses, organizations that really make this whole thing so fruitful for everybody involved in the industry, as well as music lovers and audiences who are inspired by what these musicians do. And speaking of inspiring, I want to introduce to everybody um, our guests for today, who namely are the CEO of Bella Music Foundation, Mira Kim, conductor Ellen H. Chapio, and concertmaster uh, Kulik Jong. And this is such a privilege because uh, they are not only amazing musicians, and we're bring them on stage one by one, uh, but they are also just incredible administrators and people who are really involved in making lives better for people, and especially for people who are blind or visually impaired. And so let's put into the show everybody.
Uh, we have Ellen H. Uh, Chapio on the left, who is an artistic director and principal conductor of the Wharton Institute for the Performing Arts in New Jersey, leading four programs serving nearly 2,000 students. She is so involved in many parts of music education. She has been trained in with a background in organ performance, conducting from renowned institutions. She actively engages in guest conducting, teaching roles across the com uh, country. Uh, Chapio also serves on boards and committees advocating for youth orchestras, music education, showcasing her dedication to enriching communities through music. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us, Helen. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's a real privilege. Our next up, we have Kulip Jong, who's an incredible, well-renowned violinist who began his musical journey at the age of five in South Korea before moving to Hawaii, made his solo debut with the Honolulu Symphony at age nine. And he later moved to New York to study at Juilliard Pre College with Dorothy DeLay, who is a renowned violin pedagogue, uh, earning bachelor's and master's degrees under various scholarships. Uh, as an educator, he teaches at the esteemed um, uh, institutions like the Juilliard Pre-College as well as the Manus College of Music and has served as a visiting professor at UMass Amherst. Uh, currently he is the concert master of Classical Notes Philharmonic, a founding member of the Ben Sori uh, Quartet and founder of Four Strings Music Festivals in New York. Welcome to the show Kulik, it's so awesome to have you. Thank you for joining us. Hello, nice to meet you all. And last but definitely not least, we have the CEO of Bella Music Foundation, Mira Kim, who is a wonderful pianist, soloist, chamber musician, a Steinway teacher and educational partner. Um, Mira, you won the first prize at the Sir Kwang uh, Piano Competition at the age of seven, and you have graduated with honors from Chugi uh, University for the Arts in Seoul, Korea, earned an artist diploma in piano performance from the University of Northern Iowa, and have served many different assistantships. You earned your Master of Music degree in piano performance from Manhattan School of Music, a renowned uh, music school in the US, and you've performed all over the world, uh, United States, Canada, Argentina, Mexico, South Korea, and many renowned concerts of venues. Uh, you are also the CEO of Bella Music Foundation, which we'll talk about. But first of all, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Mira, this is your a foundation you're very passionate about. Can you tell us a little bit about this organization, the Bella Music Foundation for Blind Musicians and how it started off? Yeah. Um, one day I was praying and about the calling to support talented blind musicians in classical music. Um, it was very sudden and something I have never, <laughs> never <laughs> thought about before. But looking back, I think, you know, my only other encounter with blind musicians before starting BMF was a community service event when I was in middle school. Um, mm. A student um, from a blind school played mm -hmm. a familiar hymn on the piano and it deeply <laughs> moved me. So I was thinking, you know, about what I could start with and then decide to found a music foundation for the blind. And so I can meet other people who can support us too. Wow, that's really inspiring. Yeah. And how long has this organization been around for? When did you start this? And uh, we started this organization in 2018. Yeah. 2018. Yeah. Wow. And you've grown so much. I know you, we will talk a lot more about where, where you are, will be performing and everything. How has this journey been? Are you, how are you finding blind musicians? Um, is it through these kind of auditions? How are you getting in touch with them? Do you usually talk to their parents? How does it all work? Um, actually, um, we found, you know, um, we found this organization and we started, you know, doing some love concert mm. because, um, we visited, you know, some um, blind music schools mm -hmm. or blind schools for, you know, free concert to mm -hmm. just, you know, um, have them, you know, um, explore to classical music. And then we found it, you know, um, we pulled actually to uh, music competition for blind musicians because they're very talented and we wanted to give some scholarships and then we were just thinking maybe mm -hmm. it, you know, as as a musician myself, um, mm -hmm. we believe that it would be more beneficial for mm -hmm. their career if they were to win a competition and receive a scholarship and perform in New York City as prize. Yeah. So this is why we established the music competition and, you know, concert competition and such thing. And we met a lot of, you know, very talented blind musicians all over the world. 
actually. That's amazing. And I guess the online world being expanding and being able to receive these sort of auditions all over the world, that's really grown, right? You've really yeah. grown your organization. Yeah. And I know that we'll talk about this later, but you're also going to be performing all over the world. And France mm -hmm. is a part of this idea as well. And yeah. This is just so cool. This is really yeah. amazing. Um, what is the what is the audience like for these concerts? Do you find a lot of people wanting just being really inspired and moved by these musicians? Yeah, of course. Um, we you know we've been building our um, concert series, so we do have some audiences we already know. So they do know you know there are many um, talented blind musicians. Mm -hmm. So that's been you know our audiences and also. We're on Facebook, you know, Instagram, for such, you know, mm -hmm. social media. So we do have, you know, some audiences. Of course, you know, in our, you know, um, Bergen County, um, mm. we do have other, you know, audiences as well. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah. I want to divert out and ask Helen a, a question. Are you a conductor? How long have you been working with blind musicians? How long have you been doing this? And yeah. It hasn't been that long at all. And I met Mira a few years ago okay. um, and she has been a source of inspiration from day one. It's incredible uh, what this organization is doing. You know, we are really uh, through the pandemic time, uh, musicians are constantly looking for equity in opportunities among, you know, uh, underrepresented uh, kind of group of musicians. and it didn't really occur to me that visually impaired musicians or blind musicians, how do we support them? Mm -hmm. And, you know, their talent is equal to sighted people. But the fact that the world is just so primarily filled with sighted people that we lose, pun, no pun intended, <laughs> lose sight of yeah. the fact that there are a whole bunch of uh, incredibly talented musicians. So, creating that access and opportunity and to be able to showcase them uh, where, you know, without a foundation such as BMF, I think it's really difficult as a young or, you know, even seasoned uh, blind mu musician to find that opportunity. So wow. um, I feel very blessed to know Mira and BMF and to have uh, been included in this team of incredible artists and orchestral members wow. as part is just really to cheer our wonderfully talented blind musicians and create that space on the world that. stage for them. So, I love that. I, I just have a, I have a question, two questions for you, Ellen. Uh, what is it like when you listen to these blind musicians perform and you have to also conduct? And also, what is it like to work with these musicians? And it might be a little bit different because there's a little bit I imagine it will be different uh, uh, rehearsing, but what is the, what is the experience like for you as a conductor working with these musicians and their music making and the way they make music? So in some ways, it's the same. <laughs> in some ways, it's very different. Mm. So I think uh, the goal of achieving that perfect unity with a soloist, um, because I always talk about audience members listen with their ears as well as eyes mm. and chamber musicians you know like Kalip and Mira they know that half of the communication is through sight absolutely so we yeah. really rely on that now it's kind of like I fall in love with the soloist one way <laughs> <laughs> because I can see mm. their beautiful music making I'm looking at their bow speed as mm. if there is no tomorrow, you know, just so that we can end it together. <laughs> um, when in other occasions, I might just be, you know, really relying on my ears. Mm. So I felt like as a conductor on the podium, um, between the orchestra members and the soloist, I'm constantly being that uh, bridge mm. to say, okay, you know, um, look at my stick here because I'm looking at the soloist. Yeah. So form of communication is different, but ultimately I think the goal and uh, music making uh, is our desire to be at the highest level. Mm -hmm. There is no um, you know, a kind of handicap, uh, like, wow. oh, that's good enough because I, I, think, uh, I think that's what's really the same, no matter what.
That's so moving. I really love your answer to that. That's just so really touching for me to know that in spite of these, you know, impairments that these people have, the, the, the love they have for music, the passion they have, and the ability to express themselves is just as good, if not sometimes more, because that's their world. That's all they know. I think it's sometimes. better. You know, <laughs> I think their years are incredibly developed. So wow. um, because of, of that heightened um, development mm. of the hearing, that I, you know, I really felt like, oh my gosh, I got to step up my game here. Right? <laughs> yeah. Because they can hear, they can hear the, the, the intonation of the orchestra probably even clearer than some of the sighted musicians, because that's what oh, they're being developed, you know. So, so it's, um, I, I kind of uh, really feel that we have to step up the game <laughs> so much more. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to turn the attention to Kulip. Um, what is your, how long have you been involved with, um, the BMF and being concert master and what is it like for you as a concert master? You know, you're probably watching uh, Helen stick <laughs> very intently, but also the solos is probably right next to you too. So you're feeding off that. It's sort of a, a triangle of sorts. What is it? What is experience like for you? Yeah. So first off, um, I think I'm the newest member of the team here. <laughs> okay. And uh, when I was approached by Mira, um, and uh, she mentioned that uh, Helen was going to be the uh, conductor and music director. I was like, okay, I am in. <laughs> and that's very vice versa. I mean, <laughs> it's like, unless it's cool. Cool. I'm not sure if I can do this. <laughs> yeah, so it's a fairly new project for me. And um, this is something very new as well for me because uh, usually most of the work that I've done is with sighted people mm -hmm. and i went to their uh performance in new york city where helen was conducting um with uh, members of the new jersey youth symphony um and i was just blown away amazed mm -hmm. at everyone the soloists helen mm -hmm. the organization mm -hmm. and i i was just okay when they talked to me when mira approached me i was like <laughs> I didn't have to even think much. I was mm -hmm. like, I am going to be part of this. I'm going to make this also very special and uh, you know, be part of the vision. And so I'm glad that I am. Thank you for approaching me. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> I love that. Thank you, Kulip. Uh, so there's, I, I want to bring attention to M Mira um, to talk about this competition. Uh, there's, um, we have some clips which we're about to play, but I would love for you to talk to us a little bit about what this competition entails, what the prizes may be, and how it how did it start? You have the music competition as well as a concerto competition, and you also have a festival series. So tell us a little bit about the different parts of what mm -hmm. makes BMF and the opportunities you offer. Yeah, as I mentioned before, um, mm -hmm. we made this competition to you know offer them some scholarships, mm -hmm. but also you know more experience, you know for their resume. <laughs> You know more <laughs> resume so um since you know that that music competition for the blind is open to um open only to those under 30 we mm. felt that it would be great to have another one for anyone over 30. Oh. so when we had the idea of creating the bmf symphony orchestra we introduced a concert competition for blind musicians over 31 alongside the previous winners from the BMF music competition. So um, for the music competition, we give them total in total um, 10,000, 10, you know, dollars yeah, that's for amazing. cash prize. And then also from um, Dancing Dots, we got donations for this software program, cool. um, which really helps, you know, blind musicians to be, um, able to read that music and listen to yeah. that music from that PDF, you know, file to this Braille, you know, so software. So um, I think, you know, that really, that we're very thankful to Dancing Dots to donate mm. this, you know, great programs for this blind musicians. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I love I love that. Um, so mm -hmm. we're gonna play. We're gonna take a little tiny break and play some music and play yeah. some introductions. And mm -hmm. so, um, thank you once again, and we'll we'll be right back. Okay. Fortunately, unable to continue our concert series throughout the pandemic, 
generous donations from our sponsors, Dancing Dots, and a grant from the Northern New Jersey Community Foundation gave us the push we needed to make the BMF International Music Competition for the Blind a reality. The competition was a great success, and we received applications from talented musicians all over the world. That's amazing. So you're, you're right, Helen. It's you, you really have to step up because they sound incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you, really, it's the case. And, you know, Khalid mentioned about New Jersey Youth Symphony members playing with uh, three um, blind musicians uh, last year. And oh. they all came away saying, wow, what have I been doing? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was a moment of inspiration for them. So. Mm. So the blind yeah. musicians um, just really inspiring the next generation of musicians to step it up. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, there, there must be something about not having sight that really 
forces one to listen so intensely. And so because of that, you have an impact on other people because of your expressivity is not, is not I guess, it's, it's just so focused. There's such a focus in the way that they are listening. Um, I just, I'm just all awestruck. It's beautiful music. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I want to just ask, um, well, there's a, uh, Mira, for you, you've started this kind of competition in 2020, you started the Music Foundation in 2018. What's motivating you to keep going and what are some of the moving moments for you? What has touched you and made you feel, I really want to keep doing this no matter what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, you know, pursued our mission for almost mm -hmm. 60 years now. And then okay. we've met numerous blind musicians from around the world. But we've discovered, you know, that many talented blind musicians are struggling to continue their careers because they don't have resources or opportunities to showcase their talent. So our mm -hmm. goal is to become a reliable source for these blind musicians. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, seeing them succeed is my biggest motivation to continue <laughs> yeah. this work. Wow, yeah. I love that. Um... And I want to talk a little bit about the Hanbit Trio as well. And I know Helen, you might be have you have been involved with that. And could you tell us about what that experience has been like? And what is the Hanbit Trio? Is it uh, and Hanbit Trio J? Sorry, I think. <laughs> and what is that like? What is that experience for you? And what makes it a very rewarding experience? Right. You know, I think um, the fact that they are a trio um, makes them kind of more um, uh, available and flexible, you know, okay. to be on the stage because they can play. Uh, their own chamber music, but also they can play repertoires just like, you know, what they did, Beethoven Piano Trio, uh, with wow. the full orchestra. So I think, you know, having just a one soloist versus having a chamber group is really versatile because they can go to a smaller location of very private chamber concerts to inspire people as well as a big stages. So I think okay. it was a brilliant idea to form that. And so just to confirm for me, uh, the Hanbit Trio J, that's they are all three blind musicians playing together. Is that right? Yes. Wow. True. I, wa I, will, I wonder what their rehearsals are like. <laughs> that must be so fascinating. You know, when I had a, a piano um, rehearsal with them prior to the orchestral rehearsal, yeah. and I kind of observed how they were communicating, and it was really no different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, <laughs> slow, can we slow down here a little bit more? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, sure, you know, and, you know, I, you know, I'm changing that one penultimate note and give me a little bit more space before we resolve that. So oh. there really wasn't anything different. Um, mm. And I think sighted people like ourselves, we are fascinated, you know, how they can do this at this highest level. Yeah. But what I come away from it is uh, why not? You know, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it is the world that we live in. We're lazy. I think mm. the sighted people yeah. just become lazy and mm. we rely on other sensory where if one was give, taken away from us, but if that was how you were born into this world, that's your world. And they have yeah. completely maximized that. I, I find it so beautiful to see because I now that in, when I'm thinking about it, I guess sighted people can get distracted a lot easier. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, like when, when you're performing, you're like, oh, I wonder who was in the audience. And you look and see who's in the audience. Or you might like, oh, the page turn yeah. didn't work. Or you're like, oh, <laughs> is my pedal right? And all these little things as a pianist or, you know, um, is my hair in the way? Like all these other things that <laughs> because of the, you know, we, because we're such visual people, we get distracted. But for them, it's this world that's so much more focused in comparison, I find. And well, you know, how be, many yeah. sighted musicians in color when you play solo? How many times do you close your eyes? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, you know, there we go. We just mm -hmm. made a point. Yeah. yeah. And those are, those are the moments where you're so just in the zone, perhaps, yeah. yes. that you don't, you don't need that extra sense. You just decide, I'm just going to go for it or something. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. yeah. I mean, my old piano teacher used to tell me, turn off all the lights in the room and make it pitch dark and practice. I remember that this was when I was like, I don't know, 10 years old. I'm like, why? Because you have to know exactly where to jump to. Mm -hmm. You need to know the keyboard yeah. as if you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And working with our BMF musicians really brought me back to that moment. Like, yeah, you know, we are trying to, <laughs> you, know, uh, uh, you know, have that world where the visual noise is reduced. Yeah. Mm. 
Are you going to be able to conduct with your eyes closed, Helen? <laughs> not, this time. not this time, because as as the bridge or as the guide for the orchestra to support the musicians, um, I'm going to need to be able to see the solos. <laughs> Wonderful. No, no, of course, I'm, I, I, I said that in jest, of course. Um, and Kula, I, I think you've been involved in um, judging this this competition and just viewing the rounds what is that like been for you we're about to announce the winners of course but i want to know yeah. as, a, as a as a juror like or as a teacher and seeing this how how do you find it yes so i've judged many competitions and but this is the first time i judge such a, a special case here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and at first i wasn't quite sure how to judge um uh -huh properly because I, I wanted to make sure I was doing a very fair job. Um, but then as soon as I heard the contestants, the participants, I forgot all that. <laughs> they, I mean, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. They were wow. just as or even more artistic, technically capable, and mm -hmm. just everything was there. So I, I put away my original thoughts and I just judged like I would any other competition. Amazing. And this competition is special in a way because it's not just one instrument. So you're judging in a way many multiple disciplines. Um, and what's that like been for you? So, yes, we had quite a number of various <laughs> instrumentalists. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, we, and a vocalist. Uh, yeah, and vocalist, vocalist. Yes, yes. Of course. Of yes. course. <laughs> um, and, you know, we had uh, amongst us, we had some uh different opinions but i think we pretty much agreed uh it was actually quite easy yeah. the decisions were quite yeah. easy to do yeah. yes yeah and and i think aside from the technical aspect you're also judging based on how moving their interpretation is you know mm -hmm. and so a lot of that is very similar to any other competition right yes so uh what i also did was i actually closed my eyes during the comp mm -hmm. when I was uh, at first I was looking and then I decided not to look actually and I just tried to you know listen as much as possible more than view the players and that helped me a lot actually yeah you enter into their world for a little while <laughs> that's right you experience right. the music through through their their ears basically yes. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing, Kulip. Um, Helen, shall we announce the winners? What do you think? <laughs> sure. I mean, mm. we would love to. And um, I've been tasked to do this. Yes. Um, and so I ask, you know, my colleagues to jump in any time. Mm. But um, usually when we do the prizes, we go from the third prize and up. So I will start that way, I suppose. We do have a tie um, for the third prize. And I'm going to you know, look down on my paper so I don't mess this one up. Yeah, um, of course, of course. <laughs> we actually have two Canadians uh, oh, who share that prize. And um, uh, one of them um, is a guitar, a classical guitarist. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ioana Grandrabor, I hope I'm mm -hmm. saying that, Grandrabor, excuse me. And, um, you know, she was born in Romania originally. And at oh. the age of five, she started playing the piano. And then at the age of 12, picked up the guitar. Um, and then the whole family immigrated to Montreal uh, at oh. the age of 16. And so she's been studying there and uh, she went to uh, the conservatory in Montreal to study classical guitar. And then went, up, went over to Europe in Germany and France to study further. And now, you know, she's a seasoned um, teacher and a performer. And uh, we could just really tell. And her artistry was just really wonderful. And she'll be playing the second movement of that beloved Rodrigo's guitar control. So wonderful. we're really excited about that. And then uh, sharing that same prize is uh, Valerie Poisson from uh, Canada as well. And um, she has actually had, uh, she's visually impaired and she has actually had many stage uh, opportunities to sing different roles and main roles. Wow. Uh, okay. Yet, you know, I think singing an aria with an orchestra might be something that she hasn't done as much. And we're mm -hmm. really excited to bring her over and she'll be singing um, the O Quante Volte by Dalini. Mm -hmm. So uh, congratulations to our uh, third prize winners. 
And our second prize winner actually currently is uh, a student, a doctorate student at Rutgers University at the Mason Gross uh, School of the Arts oh. at uh, Rutgers University. And, um, but he, you know, attended LaGuardia High School for the Arts mm -hmm. and he studied at uh, Rutgers University getting his master's. So he's, you know, a tri-state um, native, it's essentially, but originally from Chile. Wow. So Chilean uh, pianist, and he was incredibly dynamic, and he's playing a very unusual and underperformed uh, Lyapunov's uh, second piano concerto. And wow. so we're going to be really learning that piece all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never conducted, and Cliff says he had never played it. And wow. he's really an unusual piece, and yet pianist never rests. It's like 20 <laughs> minutes of nonstop. <laughs> Right, it's a course, one yeah. large movement kind of a rhapsodic, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, piece. And then the first prize goes to a uh, Korean born uh, violinist, Ji Sun mm -hmm. Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, she was the first blind musician to come across uh, to America uh, to study uh, at the Nan School of Music doing her master's and she finished and she went back to Korea to a teach and she's part of that uh, Hyundai trio. Um, she is a dynamic violinist and for Clip to, you know, say <laughs> unanimously, yeah. all three of us to say yeah. as a violinist to yeah. pick her uh, and she played that, you know, one of the most well-known and beloved uh, Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto oh, first movie. Course. So mm -hmm. the stakes were really high for her to impress all of us and she will impress you. And she has won many, many uh, competitions throughout the world. Wow. And so she's not, um, although she's just in her 20s, I think uh, she is a very matured and seasoned performer. And I think introducing her to the wider community of, uh, you know, my colleagues of orchestral conductors to say, you know, consider her as your next yeah. soloist. We're really excited to introduce her in that light. Well, congratulations to all the winners. This is really exciting. Let's put them on screen one more time and to just congratulate them. Uh, Valerie, uh, Iona, Yurko, and Jisun. This is an amazing honor. Congratulations. So what does it, what does this mean now? So, um, yeah, congratulations. What does this mean? So Mira, you probably know best and um, you're the organizer and the mastermind behind all this. What does it mean now that you have these winners? When will they perform and how is it going to work out? Yeah, so um, mm. from this um, April 7th, actually, we have, you know, concert series, actually, so many. Okay. Um, but, you know, if I just point um, two of them, which mm. is the BMF Music Festival for the Blind. Okay. Um, um, we are actually, BMF Festival is fostering collaboration among blind organizations, music mm -hmm. groups, and musicians from around the world. And mm -hmm. we'll be showcasing, you know, this talented four, you know, winners mm -hmm. at yeah. that, you know, concert. So the first one will be in um, US, a, mm -hmm. um, and the second one will be in Paris, actually. Um, wow! France. Yes. So <laughs> actually, um, we worked on this, you know, BMF Music Festival at the main auditorium of UNESCO House in okay. Paris for nine months actually. <laughs> and finally we received an invitation for the festival. So on um, October 15th, uh, which is White K Day is set aside to celebrate the achievements of blind people and the important, you know, important symbol yeah. of blindness and tool of independence, the White K Day, um, as we celebrate their musical talent and uh, accomplishments as musicians we believe that music can serve as a tool of independence for them in society and empower you know empowering them as exceptional musicians so um we'll have this two-part um music festival mm -hmm. at um barrymore film center in fort lee new jersey on april 28th mm -hmm. and october 15th um, at the wow. UNESCO headquarter in Paris on October, yeah, 15th. That's a great yeah. achievement, yeah, not only for great. your organization, <laughs> bravo. We're very Funny. honored to be there. Yeah, 
yeah. I mean, it's a great achievement for your organization, but what an opportunity for yeah. these young musicians to be able to play. And I think one of it is to know that your music is serving some purpose. It's not just a performance, it's to inspire yeah. others, to empower other um, people who may be sighted to, to show them what's possible. That, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, you don't have to, you can be sighted and do amazing things as well and not sighted and also do amazing things. And I think that's something that we all need to be reminded of that whatever we're given uh, as gifts, we can just use and maximize to the most we can. And that's mm -hmm. sometimes enough, more than enough. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. We're going to pivot to some music now, give you um, three, a little bit of a break before um, wrapping up our show. So first of all, we have a little clip from the Love Concert Series uh, for students at the Blind School. And we also have some uh, different fundraising clips and the Hanbit Trio uh, at the Merkin Hall performances. Um, before we launch into that, Mira, do you have anything to say about these little clips we're about to hear or the music we're about to listen to? Um just listen to it then you will know you know I, I think you know there's no word to just explain you, you can't mm. just watch it <laughs> wonderful okay show sure, it please please enjoy <laughs> in 2019 bml held the first concert in the love concert series for blind schools at saint joseph's to spark interest and curiosity for classical music in young students Handmade thank you cards from the students of St. Joseph's School for the Blind was heartwarming and gave motivation to make our BMF concert series annual and extend its impact to the local community. Our second visit to St. Joseph's School for the Blind in 2020 became further motivation to carry out our mission after students told the performers that they had seen a movie through the music, while others were so touched they were in tears. For our next concert in the BMF Concert Series in 2020, we were fortunate to be sponsored by Steinway & Sons for a concert in Greenwich, Connecticut. This concert featured pianists Howard Abel, Mimi Malkonian, Mira Kim, and bass Hyung Jo. The concerts of Hanbit Trio J, a visually impaired piano trio from South Korea, were an outstanding success. The Darkness to Light concert held on June 16th at Merkin Hall was a truly unforgettable experience that left the audience in awe. The captivating performance moved many to tears, and the concert concluded with a thunderous standing ovation. It was an incredible experience that showcased the extraordinary talents of Hanbe Chio J and the New Jersey Youth Symphony conducted by Helen Chapio.
or the tail gets attacked on the YouTube. Wow, that was amazing. Yeah. That's really beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, it's, so, uh, I, I, it's really funny for me to see that they don't have any music stands. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And all, everybody behind the orchestra, they all have their music in front of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's these people who are like, no, it was completely by memory. There's no stand, there's no music, no worrying about the page turn or anything. Oh. It's just it's just seamless. It's right. beautiful. It's freedom that they must have, yeah. 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 Um, just, uh, Kulip, in your... Have you played when I mean, you're playing with these musicians? Um, how are you? Do you feel inspired? What What are you feeling as you're kind of uh, collaborating with them more and more and becoming more involved with BMF? What are your thoughts? I mean, in, inspired is just uh, not. It's a small word. I think <laughs> I'm beyond inspired, obviously. <laughs> um, and I look forward to um, meeting these uh, competition winners mm -hmm. for the April concert. Yeah, um, yeah. it's. It's gonna be actually my my first time mm -hmm. uh, leading an orchestra under the baton of Helen. Ooh, um, nice. Yes, with these uh, you know uh, uh, people here, mm -hmm. and I I'm excited. I'm actually I I'm, I don't know what to expect again, but I, <laughs> yeah. I am definitely looking forward to it, and I'm with the right people, and yeah. so I trust them that it will <laughs> all work out beautifully. <laughs> And sometimes not knowing what to expect has its magic about it. Then That's you really funny. have yes. something spontaneous or something miraculous happen because you don't expect it. And I love that, actually. I love that. <laughs> wow. We're going to wrap up soon. Um, Mira, do you have any final words to say to our audience or anything you want to talk about? Um, any you know, particular remarks, you know, comments from your reflection on doing this so far. I hope you continue to do this kind of work um, or vocation for the, you know, as long as you can or have the energy to. Yeah. Do, you any, do you have any thoughts on how it's been so far and what you'd like to do achieve in the future? Yeah, actually, um, we want, you know, everybody to join to this, you know, great concert mm -hmm. on um, April 7th in Wayne and mm -hmm. you know, April 28th in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Yeah. And if you could just come and, you know, enjoy the concert, that's going to be great for us, you know. Uh, and also, um, we're just trying to, you know, help this talented blind musicians because they're so talented, you know, it's really you know, um, our work, you know, go forward more, you know, to present them and showcase to different, you know, stages, words, you know, worldwide, actually. Yeah. So we're trying to, you know, do our best and, you know, this concert will be great. So please join us and we need <laughs> your support as well. <laughs> so Wonderful. you can go to, you know, our website, um, mm. bellamf.org and or, you know, slash donate. <laughs> so I believe we also have a little, yes, yes, we also have a QR code for everybody to support. Well, you did all the promoting for me. Thank you so much. Um, so just to re, <laughs> just to re enunciate, they have some amazing concerts coming up. Um, 7th of April at the Bethany Church in Wayne, New Jersey. And this is a little um, promotion for it as well as uh, there's a 28th of April, which is the first part of the BMF Music Festival series for the blind at the Barrymore Film Center in, in the US, along with the BMF Symphony Orchestra, where Kulip and Helen will be collaborating and it'll be really, really fun. We also have an incredible, exciting 15th of October 2024 concert in Paris, France at the UNESCO headquarters main auditorium at 7 p.m. with again the BMF Symphony Orchestra with the winners which we just announced and this is so exciting I can't imagine playing there and being so uh, in such a great space so I wish you all the best thank you so much we're going to pivot just to, um, to the end of the show where I will just talk about the rest of our um, upcoming season before saying bye to everybody again so for everybody listening thank you so much for your support I want everybody to support uh, the BMF Association so make sure you donate and go to the website if you can um, just a little bit about our upcoming season uh, at Virtual Concert Hall, San Francisco, Cold Orchestra and Progressive Musicians. We have such an incredible season uh, left ahead. We have some upcoming deadlines. Please check our website at Virtual Concert Halls, sound at specific competition.com, uh, as well as progressivemusicians.com for more information about 
all of this that we have. We are expanding our um, reach to more musicians all over the world. Uh, there's going to be an a Cairo Opera Orchestra concert coming up. We also have an exciting concert in Chechia coming up as well as um, Carnegie Hall auditions are coming up and within the next week. So there's a lot to be a part of. We also produce a Beethoven show every Thursday and Sunday. This is where Larry Rapchak, who is part of the Architects of Music, dissects each and every symphony by Beethoven. And Dr. Anna and I, hosts, will talk about the episode one by one and just it's basically, um, we're in awe of Larry and how he talks about these symphonies and dissects it and makes it so appealing for everybody. So I hope you enjoy and follow us more. I want to give a big hand to our collaborators, our partners, people who have been incredible from the beginning to support all these amazing ministries that we do. Uh, these collaborators, these partners of ours uh, have been there. Some of them like History of Music and I Classical Academy have there from the beginning. And so we really, really want to thank you. These orchestras are just expanding. Next season, we're going to have like three or four pages of these sponsors and of course Chicharo Music is sponsoring a lot of album distribution and creation this is just an amazing part of the music industry that you may not hear as much part, uh, a part of but they are active musicians who are trying to make a difference and empower people just like the Bella Music Foundation I want to make sure we thank our team our amazing team who produces this show tech checks everybody make sure everybody sounds as good as possible. We have hosts, script writers, producers, directors, social media managers, and everybody under the roof to make sure that virtual concert halls support everything that we do, especially the things that we say yes to. Now, before we end the show, I just want to make sure we thank our guests uh, for today. We're going to bring back Helen, um, Mira, and Kulip. Thank you for joining. I've been so moved and touched by what you've talked about and did your organization thank you for joining us we have another show in may 11th i believe so I look forward to seeing you all there and thank you thank you thank, thank you. you so much thank okay, you everybody thank you for joining us see you all next time bye for now bye. Bye.